it's we are live we are live we are live. live sweet live and, and direct yeah live and direct and um we'll let's just um shoot the breeze for a minute until people get on and we won't we won't uh say anything secret until yeah. but the until whole we thing get is our... a secret the, this, this whole lie is supposed to be a secret i know i'm sorry i didn't realize it when i asked you for this pattern <laughs> that that it was a secret pattern that you didn't you didn't want um you didn't want shared with the world so i i Sorry, uh, I put you on the spot, man. No, no, it, it's it, I. I kind of joke about it. I mean, I've always felt if uh, you know if if what I can do can bring someone else joy, I'm doing something good. I guess like if if uh, somebody ties this fly and catches a good fish on it, sweet, that's awesome. You know, it, it makes me happy knowing that they're happy. And uh, I don't know, but maybe. Well, you know, I mean, the hippie I mean, in me just wants everybody to be happy. The reason I, I, I the reason I wanted to tie this fly is because you've been catching a lot of big brown trout locally, mm -hmm. swinging, swinging this fly, and and I think in the back of my mind I know that it it's it's not the car, it's the driver, and it it's Pete throwing this fly rather than the fly being something magical. But I don't want to take any chances, you know. I want to. I want to fish what Pete's fishing because <laughs> this is working. So, so it's probably you know I'm not Pete, so I'm not going to do as well as you. But um, you know, oh, at you're least you just at, fine. At least I'll I'll uh, I'll have some confidence. By the way, I saw that uh, somebody here. Let me just somebody here said that he was from Vermont. Uh, Jody. Uh, Jody. Um, we're we're going to ask. We're going to ask anyone. Uh, who is who fishes um, either Vermont or Eastern New York? To uh, please close your browser and don't listen, because um, you know this is this is Pete's um, this is Pete's secret fly, and and we don't want we don't want everybody fishing it in our backyard. So if you're you know if you're from Vermont, you fish Southern Vermont or or Eastern New York, uh, just uh, you know maybe go uh, rake some leaves or go fishing or something and, uh, <laughs> and, and turn this off. So no, no offense, but uh, you know, we don't want to. <laughs> well, anyway, this is, this is something that I have not done before in, huh. in um, my fly tying sessions, which is to uh, show a, a new pattern to the world. So, this is kind of cool, Pete, and, and I really want to. Well, I want to thank you for sharing it with us. Well, it's it, you know it's pretty exciting. I mean, I am um, I am probably like the worst uh, like production tire ever. It's uh, I don't know if it's ADD or what. I cannot focus and sit down and tie like five of the same flies in a row. And, yeah. and this this is one though that I have started to tie a little bit more regularly, and I I do tie a little more frequently. But, you know, I'm always making tweaks and, and I love um, what I love about fly tying is just being creative um, or the ability to be creative. I mean, following patterns is really, really important. And there's a lot of patterns that I like to tie um, where I'll look at recipes, but I'm always trying to make little tweaks and, and change things a little bit and maybe like using different materials and and just or just trying to like go from scratch and, and just say, OK, well, let me try this or let me try that. And and then just go out and fish it and see if it works and and so this is this is kind of a pattern that I've I've been tying now for a couple of years um, you know probably just two or three years now um, you know uh, playing around and swinging flies and you know I, I love to swing flies uh, for fish and you know be it either steelhead or or you know lake run rainbows or or brown trout brook trout rainbow trout whatever um, you know when when Sean and uh, started working on these trout spay rods or these, you know, micro two-handed rods, whatever you want to call them. Um, it was so much fun. You know, I love fishing the bigger two-handed rods, but I started to realize, you know, I can't use these big two-handed rods all the time. You know, we just don't have the water around here. And also, you know, you could catch a 18 inch trout, you know, a really, really nice trout on like a 13 foot seven weight that you'd use for steelhead. And it, 
you're not going to get much of a fight out of it. It's, uh, you know, you're going to strip the fish in. And this this could be like the trout of a lifetime on a four weight or a five weight on some river, but that rod's just too big. So when when these micro two handers, you know, started coming out, it was it was just so much fun. And it really kind of got the wheel spinning like, OK, well, now I got to try and, you know, think about some flies that work well for for trout. And, and, you know, it's, it's a fun way to kind of open up some rivers that you, maybe you've fished your whole life. Uh, and now you can kind of look at them completely differently. Um, you know, I think we have a lot of uh, advertising right now talking about, you know, you know, fish your river a, a new way for the first time, you know, with two handed rods. And as cheesy mm -hmm. as it sounds, it's true. It's a hundred percent true. Uh, you know, now there's runs on, you know, some of the local rivers that I look at that I used to walk right by that now I'm like, oh, that's the run I want to get to, um, you know, with these with these trout spay rods or these little two-handers. And this was a fly I just started, you know, playing around with and started having success and I make little tweaks and, you know, have some more success. And and then, you know, started tying in like, okay, now I think it looks kind of cool. And, and, uh, and yeah, it's, it's been pretty successful. It's, um, it's fun though, you know, uh, you know, learning from, you know, yourself and, and like Sean Brillen and, and, you know, uh, all these guys around here that are all much, much better fly tires than me, um, you know, little tips and tricks like, uh, you know, there's a little trick with like lapping or wrapping lead wire that I saw from one of your videos with Tim, or I think it was one of Tim's tips um, or maybe it, was yeah, it wasn't my tip. tip. I'm not clever. <laughs> no, it's it probably one of your tips too. Um, but I'm like looking at those and like, you know, learning little tricks and stuff. I'm like, okay, well, how can I do this? And how can I do that? And, you know, the information that I gave you about this fly is probably, you know, I am not a professional fly tire. I just really like to do it. Um, but uh, this is the way that I do it, but there's probably better ways to wrap on certain materials or secure certain materials. Uh, I wrap backwards when I tie flies, I'm gonna let it out. Um, I tie backwards. Um, which is why I'm not tying today and you're tying because <laughs> I will confuse everybody when I tie this thing. But, um, you know, th this is a pattern though, that I've had a lot of success with, uh, lately. It's uh, it's a fun pattern to tie. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, I don't know if the fish are taking it as a sculpin or a crayfish. Um, but it's, I don't put a lot of weight into it. And, um, and it's, uh, it's, it's just got a couple wraps of lead wire, but I usually kind of adjust my tip when I'm swinging flies. Um, and cause I like my tip to go down my fly to just kind of like, you know, roll gently over the rocks and stuff like that and over the debris. And I usually also have a right hook up. Um, you know, so when I wrap that hook in, I like a hook up fly, um, just so it doesn't get hung up as much. Um, you know, but that's, that's kind of, I guess, you know, my, rambly spiel on uh on this fly and <laughs> you know what what makes it fun but or what i enjoy about fly tying i mean if uh, i'm not going to show anybody my tying desk because it is a mess it is well so is mine they don't see my desk they just see the photography so <laughs> there's my there's my you can see my desk is a mess <laughs> oh i'm 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 not moving I am not moving. I'm not going to let anybody see it because it is, <laughs> it is bad. <laughs> it's really bad. And I had my, my mother-in-law was in town over the weekend too. And it, it's still pretty bad. <laughs> so I see a question from Mike. What's an example of a micro two-handed rod and, and Drew, maybe you can put up a link to the, yeah. a couple of the three and four weight uh, two-handed rods. Oh, by the way, I have really bad news for everyone that Julia is not here. Oh. Uh, Julia had, previous engagement and uh drew nisbet our community manager is 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 playing julia today so um thanks drew uh, yeah thanks drew um so we'll put that up yeah we're stuck with drew but we, we like drew too yeah okay uh, for the little two-handers we do a three weight and a four weight uh we also do a five weight um as well i, I kind of stick to the threes and fours a lot for for most of my trout fishing um you know i i personally i really like the three weight for the scandy lines um you know and like smaller wet flies little bucktail type and like streamers and stuff like that and you can fish this fly on the three weight as well um, but I use the four weight a little bit more with like the Skagit heads. That's just what I like. But, you know, everybody's different. Everybody's going to cast a little bit different. Um, they're both 
awesome rods um, and they're a lot of fun to cast. But that's, um, I typically fish this fly on a Skagit head though. You know, usually that's, that's what I'm running when I fish this fly. Okay, so let's start tying. I'm going to minimize you, Pete, and go into our materials there. And this fly uses a lot of stuff. You know, it looks simple, yeah. but it, it uses a lot of stuff, yeah. Pete. <laughs> I, so, uh, <laughs> you know, it's got to have more, more, more. Yeah, yeah. So the first thing I'm going to do, get this stuff out of the way, is I'm going to take a 25 millimeter I think this is 25 millimeter yeah 25 millimeter uh shank senyo's shank you can use any kind of shank you could you could also use uh you could use an up-eyed salmon hook or an up-eyed hook of some sort and uh break break the bend off break the point off and just tie it tie it on a hook it is articulated because you want a more flexible connection on a long fly like this uh, that more flexible connection, a piece of wire with a hook hanging on it, uh, tends to give the fish less leverage. A short shank hooks are much uh, better hooking and holding quality. So that's why we tie this articulated. So I'm going to... There it is. Get rid of that. That's what it's going to look like. And I'm going to put my shank in the vise. And... Make sure you really clamp down on that because I notice these things tend to wiggle around. So really, you know, really clamp down on it. And that these, you know, they sell special shank holders, but they work just fine in a in a regular vise. And the first thing we're gonna do is to just start our thread. And this is white. Uh, Pete, I know you. You recommend GSP. Um, I it's, prefer to. I prefer to use. Um, can't find my scissors. I prefer to use uh, 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 140 denier 30 thread. And 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 that's fine. I, I I have a bunch of the GSP stuff, and and I I like it. It's uh, you know I'm pretty heavy handed when I tie. Yeah. This stuff's really really strong, so it. You know that's why I like it, but it does slip a lot. Um, and you can you can see I close that eye down, and then I'm going to come back and close down this uh, articulation here. I'm going to come all the way back to where it starts to come up, and just give it another layering of thread, and then leave my thread hanging right there. Now I need to. Now I need to prepare my hook. And you like that new fancy wipe? That that was slick. Yeah. So I'm um, I'm gonna tie long as well because I want to make sure I didn't give any any bad okay. information. <laughs> so Pete recommends uh, the small size intruder wire. Yep. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how heavy this is, but it's certainly stronger than any tippet you're going to use. So you can use uh, what you can use spider wire, or you know, some people use backing. But I like the wire. Um, you know, the the intruder wire, and I like to cut about a I don't know three or four inch piece first of this wire and then I fold it in half. Sometimes this is the hardest part. Align the ends, it'll just make it easier for you and then kink the wire, put a little kink or a bend in it because you need to, gonna need to, you don't have to do that, but it helps. And then I'm going to take an intruder hook, which is a short shank, short shank hook with an up eye. You can use any, I suppose you could use any short shank hook, but these are really sharp and grabby. Yeah. Um, this is what the intruder hook looks like. And I'm going to feed, I'm going to bend this back again. 
And if you get the two ends together, it makes it easier. And I'm going to feed these two ends down through the eye. Did I get both of them? Yep. And then I'm going to loop. Is this the way you do it, Pete? Yeah. So I, I just, uh, I don't even kink the wire. I just put the two tips, you know, right next to each other. Yeah. And then feed them through, uh, I guess, the top of, a, uh, of the eye. Look, feed them through and then just flip the loop over it and pull it tight and... And you want the you want the uh, let's see if I got a white background there. You want it coming through yep. the eye like that. It get it gives you more of a straight a straight pull. All right, now I'm going to attach it. And Pete likes the hooks hook up. You could make this hook up or down. Yeah, um, I. I like I really, I like it up. And, and one of the reasons I like it up is, um, I don't, I don't put a lot of weight in, in my flies, but there is a little bit of weight in this with the, with the lead wire. And you certainly can add weight to this. You could put lead dumbbell eyes on it. You could put bead chain eyes on it. If you want, yeah. if you want that fly to get deeper, you want. but, but I always like my swing flies. Me personally, I, I like them hook up because, you know, if I'm using the heavy sink tip and I want that fly down, pretty deep or maybe there's yeah. like some some logs or rocks or something like that i feel like that fly will just kind of roll over that stuff a little bit more and kind of the wing of the fly will act as a little bit of a weed guard just kind of prevent you from hanging up when that hook points down um i feel like if there's a lot of fish i might snag a fish a little bit more which i don't want to do and also yep. uh, i get hung up a lot more and so so i kind of i like a hook eye or the hook point up uh, when this fly swings and you want the, the wires to kind of straddle both sides of the shank. That'll just help it, help that hook stay in place. And you don't want too long of a trailer, about like that, Pete, you think? Yeah. And I, you know, what I tend to do is sometimes I'll leave enough of a gap where I could replace that hook if I need to, yeah. or I could yeah. slide it out. It's a, it's a, pain in the butt to replace the hook you know i usually have to pull a piece of tippet and thread it through and kind of pop it and then get the hook if i have to replace it but that's yeah. um i always try to leave enough room so i can do that and the nice thing about wire is it's stiff enough where um you know you still get some movement so if, when that fish grabs on it's not like a long right. shanked hook that can pry out right but it's still uh, it's stiff enough where it still has a little rigidity um yeah so it doesn't really foul as much Okay, so I'm going to try to keep those pieces of wire on either side. And then just wind tightly. Try to keep them, keep them in line. Wind tightly up to about, you know, about where that, where that loop eye starts. So you get a little bit of a a uniform and then cut them off like so make sure you wind really really tightly or uh yeah. you know you'll hook a big fish and it could pull those wires out yeah, um I may, and that's why so i yeah, usually i may go back i may go back one more time not going to add that much bulk to it and now I don't know about you, but I like to whip finish this before I put my thread on yep. or put my weight on. So I'm just going to quickly like a two turn whip finish, two or three turn. I'm going to, because I'm going to put super glue on here. So it doesn't really matter. Just a couple turns. And now Pete, you recommend some super glue on there, which. Yeah. I, I usually put a little bit of glue just to, you know, yeah. the coating on that wire, I think, has a little bit of plastic on it. And uh, and that little, you know, that little bit of glue just really kind of binds everything together and prevents it from pulling. Yeah, I hate to use super glue, but. I, I do, too. A lot of times I'll double the wire back over, but it leaves it kind of bulky. Yeah. And then the nice thing about the super glue at this point is that. Um, you can line, wind your wire, your non-toxic wire, on top of there, and it'll it'll stick and it won't slide. So I kind of like that. 
And now I've got some, I'm going to switch the camera, got some of my uh, non toxic wire, 20 thousandths of an inch. And if I can find the end of it, there it is. I'm just going to take some and start right about in the middle, Pete. Yeah. And then up to the. And if you put some pressure on this, it's going to stick right to that glue, right up to the, where the loop starts, right? Yep. Okay. And I'll break it if I can. If I can't, sometimes it doesn't work, then I'll cut it and carefully push that back with my thumbnail. So is that about as much weight as you put on there? And I get super glue on my fingers. Ah. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I usually do like four or you know five, five or six wraps, and I usually try and place them like in between those two pieces of that shank where it doubles over. Um, and uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have like seven and a half turns, Pete. That's all wrong. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think I got like four or five. You know, okay. one, two, three, four, five, six. I got six. So, so now that that's fine. That's fine. It's it's not really a, that much weight. Drew, are there any questions at this point for either Pete or myself? No, Drew. I guess, I guess are, not. Are you there, Drew? Device not connected. Uh oh. Uh oh. I know he's there because he's been posting. Okay. He's coming. He looks like he went out and he's going to come back in. All right. So we'll we'll continue. Uh, so now I'm going to reattach my thread. Mm -hmm. And I'll start eh, right behind the lead there, I guess, or the wire. It'll help even it out. And go right back to the. I probably sh should I wrap over that lead now, or should I, or the wire? Should I just leave it for now? I do. You... I usually do. I usually put a couple wraps over it. Uh... Okay just to kind of really help secure it. I mean, the, the glue yeah. is going to secure it, but. Yeah. Um, and it, it, then you can kind of smooth it out too a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. When you wrap the pearl braid up, it can kind of even things yeah. out a little bit. Okay. That's probably smooth enough. Actually, no. Uh, now that I look at it in the camera, it's not smooth enough. So I'm going to smooth it. <laughs> Try to smooth it. So, Tom, one of um, one of the questions, not really a question, more of um, maybe an added tip, was to run the wire forward and then fold it backwards as it's tied in to create extra strength. What do you guys think about that technique? Uh, that's that that is what um yeah a absolutely. So I'll run it forward and then fold it back over to tie it down, and that'll really make sure it does not pull. Um, Absolutely. I, I agree with that a hundred percent. Sometimes, you know, for if I'm targeting, you know, like big lake run rainbows or, or steelhead with this fly and, and sometimes I'll tie it in different colors. Um, I always do that. You know, if, if I know there's an opportunity for like a real, real trophy fish, um, I will definitely fold the wire back over just to make sure um, sometimes I'll use a little bigger hook and maybe I'll use the large wire um instead but for uh for trout i tend not to uh not to fold it over as much but yes i i agree with that 100 percent. it has bulk which is what pete said when we were when we were tying okay so now we're going to add the tail and the body and that's made with one material a uh, flat diamond braid in pearl it's a nice material for for uh making bodies and tails. And I'm going to cut off that kinky part there. And you probably need about I don't know, four or five inches of this stuff. 
Yeah, I just I, pulled off a chunk of that was about five inches, and I have a little yeah. bit left over. And then you're going to carefully place this on top of that bump there. And you want it to extend about to the bend of the hook, right, Pete? Yep. So right about there. And you want it to stay on top so that it kind of streams back. So take a couple turns, tight turns, and make sure it's it's on top. That looks good. And then you're going to take that same material and first of all bring your thread up to about this point where everything's you know where the where the the wire the wire stopped and you're just going to use this flat braid when you take that first turn be careful it doesn't pull your tail out of place and then you just very easy to wrap a pearlescent body with this flat braid. Yep. And I don't like to go too far forward to that because I I find that I crowd the front of the fly too much. Yeah. How about you, Pete? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I kind of go like three quarters of the way or leave like a quarter of the fly or yeah. Or, or maybe two thirds and leave leave a third. Yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, definitely leave some room so you can put on that little kind of throat. Uh, and the uh -huh. wing and the head and the plastic eyes, all those materials yeah. you're you're telling me about. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to wind back a little bit on it too, and then um, you can just take your uh, dubbing needle and just fray this stuff. It's very easy to fray it so that you get a bunch of strands streaming back. Probably even do this with your finger or something. Yep. And now you've got your flashy strands that, that stream back, kind of a continuation of the body. How am I doing so far, Pete? Looks great, man. It, actually, your your strands came out much better than mine. I usually use like the point of my scissors, and it ends up cutting some. So the bodkin was a good <laughs> good touch. Good touch. <laughs> See, I'm learning stuff here. I got that tip from Jim Flagler. <laughs> yeah. He's just full of all the good stuff. Oh, I know he is. I know he is. All right. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to form a little dubbing loop. Oh, before we do that, though, we're going to yep. get our dubbing ready. And that is I'm going to use uh, ice dub in red. You can use any bright red dubbing, Pete, right? Yep. Yeah, I use and, uh, I use this SLF, you know, uh, steelhead stuff that I like. Is that too much? Yeah, that's too much. Yeah, yeah. that's too much. <laughs> How's that That better? Uh, that still looks like a lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, um, you know, I so I How's don't that? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's still too much. So I, oh. I tend to, um, when I do this little throat, um, uh, part, I go cut pretty sparse on it and I don't put it in a dubbing loop. I, I want it to stay pretty scraggly. And so I usually just oh. wax my thread and just kind of pinch a little bit on and oh. I maybe do like two inches, um, you know, just really twist it on, um, you know, just with okay. my fingers, like applying, you know, like hairs oh. dubbing, dubbing oh, or something okay. like that. All right. Well, if I can, if I can avoid a dubbing loop, I will. Yeah. I do but one at the end. For the, but... You need it for the head, which is cool. I love the effect that that gives. So I'm going to wax my, uh, wax my thread. Cause this stuff is, uh, this dubbing, this ice dub is pretty, pretty wiry. And I'll pinch a little bit and wind it on. I need more than that, though, don't I, Pete? Uh, I only see a little tiny bit. Oh, um, usually like two I got about inches. a two. I got about a two inch. And that that should be good. Okay, here uh, I'll I'll show you with the other camera. 
How's that? Is that about right? Oh, I'm still seeing oh, the same. I didn't switch cameras. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, that looks good. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I'm just trying to make a little ball, and then I kind of brush it out a little bit, make it kind of scraggly. Okay. All right. So you were right. I didn't. I only used half of that dubbing. <laughs> I guess you use more for a dubbing loop. All right. So now I'm going to wind it. Form a little red ball there. And you want it to kind of stick up, right? You want it? Yep. Oh, am I going to run out of room? No, I should I should be okay, right? You should be okay. The, 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 luckily, the materials for the wing is is not uh, it's not super or it's not that dense. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm still gonna try to keep that more forward because I don't want to. I'm gonna wind it a little bit this way because I don't want it to. I want to leave myself enough room to finish this fly properly. Yeah. Uh, that, that gives me a little more room. And now you brush it out a little bit. Yep. See, I got a little too much wax on there. Actually, I'm going to use my Velcro deal. Popsicle stick with a piece of Velcro on it. Works great. There it is. Just to scraggle it up a bit. Yep. Now this, I don't even know if the fish ever see this part. I just like it. I, you know, yeah. I, I always thought it looked cool. <laughs> I think once it gets wet, it does show through a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the wing is next, right? Yep. Okay. And I found, Pete, that I have to use two bunches of fish hair and it may be because of the size of my fingers the amount that i can grab or the oh no we, we got to do the predator uh the predator predator fibers. wrap predator wrap this is really cool stuff this predator wrap um it's um and i'm using the uv the barred uv because i think it looks cool yeah and this is a I don't know. I've never wrapped a fly with this stuff. It's a giant wrap. It's like a giant brush. But um, the material itself is is kind of a barred, sparkly uh, UV material that I think has a really cool effect. Yeah, I, and, I, I'm with you. I, that's why I used it or, or why I put it in there. I just thought it looked yeah, good. Yeah, I love it. I and love when it. I was looking... Um, you know, I, I would like catch a sculpin or something. It, I noticed there's a they're very speckled and, yep. uh, you know, yep. they, they got lots of kind of mottled color to them. And so I was like, all right, well, I, I liked how it had that kind of speckled effect. And um, yeah, I thought it brought some cool attributes to the fly. Yeah, it, I think it does. So, um, oh, you know what? I forgot one thing. Very important thing. Extremely important thing. I just found it on the floor. Take my word for it. If you don't uh. <laughs> do this, you are going to stick yourself. Absolutely. Guaranteed. That's just a piece of styrofoam, but you can use a little piece of eraser or whatever. But you're going to be brushing this back and you're going to be moving stuff around. You are going to stick yourself if you don't protect that point. It took me forever to realize. And, and this is also why sometimes I'll leave the wire long enough that I can put the hook on after or replace. The yeah, hook. yeah. You can also put it on after the fact. And so you can yeah. just tie on a loop of wire not have a hook on because i'm the same way like i look at a fly and then i start like stroking the fly back like this looking yeah. like, Ooh, all right that's gonna look good in the water and every single time i stab my hook or, or stab my finger myself. on the hook i stuck myself every time i tied this in practice until I... <laughs> all right so about a dozen do you like about a dozen strands of predator wrap yeah yeah you you're saying yeah like that's not right uh, well, maybe a little less. 
I mean, I'm not counting the ones I have, but I uh, I have, let's see, two, four, six, eight. Yeah, yeah, probably a dozen. A dozen would work. Um, I love this stuff. I'm going to put more on it. <laughs> that that's the fun thing i mean this it's all about creativity just you yeah know, you know well i i but i want to tie this the way pete does and then we're going to make this about as long as the hook right yeah i, I tend to go just a little bit beyond the bend of the hook with okay, this a little um, bit beyond okay and then i'm just going to tie that right in front of that dubbing so that it the dubbing lifts it up a little bit and this is where i would hook myself if i didn't yes. have that styrofoam on it and then once that once you got that in place take a couple more tight turns and cut the cut the excess off ah oh, that stuff looks good yeah i love it okay now the wing the other wing so what we're going to use here what pete uses and this is a, a material that i don't use very much um extra select or craft fur um but on this fly it's really cool and craft fur is just a fake fur come <laughs> comes on a fake hide <laughs> yep fake hide fake fur <laughs> I Crazy. love this stuff. I mean, it, yeah, you know, I'm gonna use I, more I, of it. I, I tie a, a lot of saltwater flies and and I use it in a lot of a lot of different saltwater patterns. And I just love how there's like a little under fur to it. It's it's yep. close to yep. and it just wiggles so good in the water and, and moves yeah. and undulates. Um, I, I really like it. So what I'm gonna do is and I found that I'm gonna try to try to get a bunch, but I found that I need to do this twice. So I get a bunch. And I kind of line it up before I cut it off the, the hide. And then you want to cut close, close to the hide, the fake hide on this. And you want to very carefully, you want to hold this in the middle and very carefully pull the under fur out of it and I like to lay it down on my tying bench and kind of line it up. Is this the way you do it, Pete? Yep. Yep. So I just pull out some of that under fur. Yeah. Yep. I got a lot line of it up. And that's about all I got. And then the other thing I like to do is I like to go at the other end and just pull out any super long hairs. Yeah, so I do the exact you know, same thing. It's kind of tape, kind of gives you a nice taper, but nothing that's that's wild um i'm gonna grab a white piece of paper here so you can see this better so there's my there's my under fur that's now not lined up but i can fix that and then here's my first bunch but i'm gonna grab another bunch and do the same thing because i found that a I don't I don't get a, a wing as as thick as I want it on this fly and B I don't get enough under fur to dub the collar. So and I don't want to have to cut more under fur. So I'm gonna cut another piece and I'm going to that doesn't belong there. I'm gonna pull off more under fur. Keep it lined up like so. I guess that's enough. And then I'm going to, you know, just remove any super long fibers and lay that down on top of the other bunch and line it up so that I have a nice nice bunch of craft fur and then i might see if i can get any more fuzz out of there so is that a bigger bunch your, your hands are bigger than mine probably you get a big enough bunch in one grab i usually just do it in in one grab um yeah 
But uh, in the clump, I guess the clump is about as thick around as a pencil uh, yep. th that I'm usually grabbing, like the long fibers, and then pull off. I mean, it's uh, it's tough to see, but I have a pretty substantial uh, uh, clump of under fur right now. You got a bigger grab than I do, Pete. What can I yeah. say? <laughs> Don't tell Flagler. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna make now we're gonna put the wing on top. We're gonna put that right on top of the uh, the other the uh, other stuff and about the same length, Pete. Yeah, yeah, just uh, yeah, exactly same length as the uh, that predator fiber. You know, yeah. just beyond the bend of the hook. And gonna put want to put a lot of pressure on this stuff because it is, as Pete said, it is slippery. And it will come out if you don't. How's that look? Good. Too much? A uh, little too much, actually. A little, little too much uh, in that. That's that's usually why I just grab the one clump. And, yeah. Um, All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna unwind and remove some of it. Whoops. Now I All right, let's try this. Let's try this. Let's try this bunch. How's that? That look better? Yeah. some reason some of that got short it's pulling out and then you again you really want to put a lot of pressure on that stuff how's that pete that looks good okay i i find if you use too big of a clump uh mm -hmm. you'll have no room to put on the eyes and yep. uh and and kind of dub that head and so I try not to do too, too thick of a wing. Yeah. I hear you. And I'm going to go forward just to clean up that stuff. Okay. So I'm going to put my eyes on about there, about a third of the way to the eye. Yep. Okay. And for the eyes... We're going to use plastic eyes. And I really like the looks of these. So we're going to use some um, mono, mono nymph eye. You could use bead, black bead chain on this if you wanted. You, you could Absolutely. use uh, heavily weighted eyes. But uh, I like the fact that this is not weighted. It's going to cast easier. And, you know, we're going to be getting, we're going to be getting this down using a uh, a sinking lead, a poly leader or a head, not not by the weight of the fly. And the fly is just going to be able, so much easier to, to manipulate. All right. So I'm going to stick the eyes on top there and try to keep them in place. I'm going to go first, first one way, then the other way. And the other way again. And then we're going to come around the base to securely lock those in place. And probably a drop of super glue, right, Pete? Yeah, not a bad idea. Well, you said it in your instructions. <laughs> I hate super glue. I should not be allowed to use super glue, as people have heard me say before. All right, enough super glue. All right, now we're going to prepare our dubbing. And probably best to prepare the dubbing before I form my loop, right? Yes. 
So I'm going to kind of spread this stuff out. Not too much because it'll make it hard to transfer it to the... I might pull out some of these longer hairs there. And then I'm going to get some angel hair or similar uh, sparkly, fine sparkly fiber. Light bright angel hair. Looks like this. I found and this uh, this uh, UV pearl, uh, this ice dubbing, this UV pearl yeah. uh, works uh -huh. works well for a substitute if you don't. I mean, I usually okay. use, it's kind of more the angel hair. It's like a longer fiber, but it's very, very yep. fine. Um, but that's. Um, and then you just kind of line some up in there, right? Yep. Yeah, just toss them in. Toss them in. Not too much, not too heavy on the on the sparkly stuff, right? No. Just a little accent. Yep. I'll put a little more in there. there. Yeah, it's and it's okay to add a little bit more, I found, uh, when I'm doing this, just because um, when I finish up the head, I usually brush it, and a lot of times that uh -huh. brush will kind of pull a little bit of that stuff out. And so if I yep. go a little heavy, it's, it's not the end of the world. Yep. Um, but I tend not to go too, too flashy. I know it seems like this fly has a lot of flash to it. It, it actually doesn't once uh, once you see it in the water and, and you start yeah, to fish really. it. Yeah, it's really quite subtle. Um, okay, now I'm going to make a dubbing loop. And I think I might use the other camera to show that. Now, I, I've been using this this tool this loop spinner i uh -huh. love this thing i absolutely love this thing it's got this little bend to uh to the tip you yeah. can kind of see right there where i can make yeah. a loop and then just hook it and yeah. spin away and and there it goes and uh so i i i love this one and and i've used some others and and you know that work great um you know i had one it was like a weighted ball with just two little pieces of wire that would you just kind of rest in it and you could spin, but this one, I, I don't know what it is about it. You know, it's, it's just really, yeah, easy. I prefer, I prefer this one, which is like the weighted ball you're talking about. Okay. Yep. But that, you know, the, anything works, a paper clip will work, right? Yeah. So I'm going to make a loop. I'm just going to come down fairly long loop too. Excuse the squeaky bobbin. To make a loop and lock that loop off. And then wind forward to just behind the eye. Put my dubbing spinner. You know, I find if I hold my dubbing spinner against my bobbin, it doesn't spin and uh, open up the loop. And then I'm going to grab that stuff that I made and I'm going to transfer. Oh, I didn't wax my, didn't wax my thread. That helps. The wax will just help this stick to the, the, thread while you're manipulating it doesn't really add any strength but it just helps you and then i'm gonna place this ugly bunch of stuff inside my thread and distribute it a little bit because i don't want it to be too bulky i hope i got enough and then I'm going to hold, pinch my thread here, and oh, I lost one of my loops. See, if I had that spinner you have, Pete, I wouldn't have done that. I, I like it, you know, just the weight of it. It holds it, and it keeps it open. I can just place everything in and then just spin it real quick, let it go, yeah. it catches it, and then... Um, sometimes I'll do like some, like just a couple spins just to capture it. And then I'll just kind of 
spread some of the material up the up the loop and down the loop just to kind of even it out a little bit yeah and then give it a bunch of spins and start brushing it a little bit and do you brush it before you wind it sometimes 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 i'll wind it really really tight and then you know brush it out a little bit yeah um, this looks pretty good but i may give it a little bit of a brush all right and then i'm going to try to fold it over to one side i think i'll go back to the other camera now oh i was on the wrong camera uh go back to this camera and going to take about three turns two or three turns behind the eyes i may not yeah three turns behind the eyes and stroke it back as I wind. And then one or two turns in front. Looks like I only got enough for one, one and a half. That'll do it enough. That'll do it well enough. How am I looking, Pete? Looks good. It does look good. I'm happy with it. And I'll tie that off securely and clip it. And the next thing to do before I quit finish, I'm sure everybody will do this, is to just pull these back to get anything out of the way and just form a nice secure head. like so, then whip finish. Squeaky bobbin. That is a very squeaky bobbin. Got to put some wax on there. And then Pete, you like to, uh, you like to turn it over and and trim the hair from the bottom, right? Yeah, I kind of trim it. I'll give it a little brush too, you know. Just yeah, I'm going to brush it a little bit. And then trim this so that that red shows through, which I think is a nice touch. Plus, sculpins are kind of flat on the bottom. So if you're imitating a sculpin, like so, and I'll brush the rest of it. Oh, that looks good, Pete. I love this fly. That really does look like a sculpin. It really does look like a sculpin. That's a cool fly. It's it's been working great. <laughs> great. Yeah. I hope those people tuned out that they're from Vermont. Now, yeah. the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cauterizer and just run it through the eye and remove any. Do you use these things? I got to get one of those. I, yeah. I, I've, I've, like, I'm still old school. Will I heat up my bodkin and then, you know, usually do it that way? Um, I got to, I got to get me one of those. Yeah. And so that's uh, that's the bug, folks. Yep. Don't forget to take the styrofoam off before you go fishing. Yeah. And if you're like me, you'll end up brushing it like six or seven times just to make sure it's perfect. Oh, absolutely. I, I've been preening my fly, you know, pretty <laughs> uh, pretty frequently. Don't but... preen your fly before you. <laughs> don't preen your fly after you take the styrofoam off the hook, though. Or you'll be yeah. Sorry. I have so many holes in my fingertips from you know yeah. tying these flies, just like yeah. ow, ow, ow. So that's it. And um, Pete, I really, I really love that fly, and I want to, I want to thank you for, for being so, um, so generous, and sharing it with everybody today. It's um, yeah, I, I usually run it. Um, you know, when it, when it comes to swinging flies, um, for, for me, what I tend to look at a lot is like water speed, 
that's that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for depth and I'm looking for speed. And during different times of the year, um, I'm looking for different speeds. Like uh, in the summertime, if I'm going to swing, uh, you know, my trout spay rod and I want to swing this fly um, and the water's a little bit warmer. Like, um, you know, we've been very, very fortunate to get lots of rain this year. And, and lately, yeah. it's, um, you know, our water temperatures are good right now. Um, and so if I'm swinging, like in the middle of the day, you know, I'm finding some fish in faster water. And so I'm usually looking at like that, you know, tops of runs. Um, but when the water was a little bit higher, um, from some of the, uh, little bit of flooding we had recently, um, I find on this, uh, on the local rivers, it seems like a lot of these fish move around and they start to move into different areas where I'll look for, you know, I'm usually looking at the water level, looking at the speed, looking at the depth, um, and this fly, um, you know, lately uh, I've had to impart a little bit of motion on it. So I'll either just kind of like pulse the rod a little bit or I'll, you know, kind of like give it a bump, feed the line back, you know, give it a little strip, feed the line back. Um, but in the spring, like, uh, you know, when our trout season opens up, I'll just swing it, just cast it, set my mend or, you know, make a little mend and just let it go and uh, not really do anything and, you know, get that grab or, uh you know, if we have some rivers that are open year round, um, you know, if I want to fish this fly, you know, same thing. I'll just cast it and swing it, you know, very, very, very slowly. And I might run a heavier tip, um, but I usually fish this with. Um, so we have these 120 grain tips, uh, Mission Skagit tips, and uh, we have a Sync 3, Sync 5. It's kind of in the middle of the tip kit um, where there's an intermediate tip. Uh, heavy sinking tip and then a really heavy sinking tip. I usually run right in the middle uh, with this fly a lot um, under normal water flows in the winter time. If I'm fishing a really deep spot, I might go to that sink seven tip, um, but I'm not one to change my tips a lot. I usually, okay, adjust my cast rather than swap out my tip. And that's one of the reasons why I like having a lighter fly. It's easy to cast. If you're fishing shallow water, you're okay. Um, you don't have to tie in a different fly. You just put on a lighter tip um or you adjust your cast maybe swing it a little bit faster but um i've done really really well with this fly in the winter time uh in the spring you know in the summertime when conditions were right um it's been a lot of fun and uh it's definitely one i've been tying a lot of lately or, or i've been tying this fly a lot lately it's uh it's just been one of those kind of confidence flies i guess um yeah i don't really have a name for it just a little space sculpin thing um, Pete Space Gulpin is yeah. good enough. <laughs> yeah. It's good enough. Um, are you still doing? Are, are are we still doing virtual casting lessons? Somebody asked about having you critique their casting video. Are we still we, doing that? We did kind of. We we stopped them for a little while. Um, we we did stop them um, right now just because it was there was a lot of things going on, and so it was getting kind of challenging to uh, to keep up with the with the demand. They were they were pretty popular. So we were doing quite a few of them. Um, if, uh, if somebody wants to send some stuff in and unfortunately the software that we've been using actually is, uh, going away. Um, the, uh, the company that we were using, uh, decided that they don't want to keep this uh, app up and running. Um, it, it'll still work for another year, but then, then we're going to have to find a new one. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know if I'm supposed to give away this kind of information, <laughs> um, but if you, if you want to send me some information, um, I can take a quick look at it and, uh, and send some stuff, uh, give some feedback. Um, but, uh, but as of right now, we're kind of not, do you have a, to... do you have an email address? That's not your personal one that they can send it to. Uh, if you send it to instructor, give me one second. It's been a little while, but this will remind me to look at a little bit more. It Can is. I send one too? Can I send sure. one too? Absolutely. So it's instructor at orvis.com. Okay. So if you go instructor so at Chris, orvis.com. So Chris, yeah, just send your casting video to instructor at orvis.com. And somebody mentioned that um, it looks like it's a very large hook. I, I don't think the size four intruder hook is, is that really large. Yeah, the, uh, the size four, I mean, the whole fly is, is maybe two, two and a half inches long, maybe three inches long um, with a size four hook. You could put a smaller hook on it. Uh, you could put a bigger hook on it. Um, you know, I'll tie um, I'll tie this same fly, but instead of using that dark brown craffer, 
I'll use a white crafter, and it looks mm -hmm. like a like a alewife or a um, or an emerald shiner. Maybe I'll put a little green yeah. flash in it. And I've yeah. done really really well with like some of the Great Lake tributaries um, with that that fly. You know, imitating a bait fish pattern, um, and uh, and it's it's worked great. Um, you know, this fly seems to, the brown one seems to work really really well for brown trout around here. Uh, it's uh, they definitely seem to kind of key in on those sculpins and yeah. Mike says you need a more creative name for the fly. And um, <laughs> I see that Geody Geody says he tuned out. So he or she, I can't tell by that name. Uh, but thank you for not for not watching. Yeah, Cause, thank you. Because he he they are from Vermont, so uh, we don't Mike, want to Mike who? But, <laughs> <laughs> but I hope. Um, I hope you all enjoyed uh, seeing this top secret fly. It's the first time we've uh, tied a fly that isn't in the public domain. And I hope that you'll all keep it secret. Just keep it yeah. between us. Okay. Don't, don't share it. Don't, don't be putting this on the internet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like we, like we just did. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> now, now I got to come up with a different fly or, or, or try to figure out a different fly. It might take a while. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, find something else. You yeah, know, the brown works. trout, the brown trout around here are going to look at this fly now and say, "Oh, damn, yeah, I've seen I'm that not, before." I'm yeah, I'm not times. touching that thing anymore. <laughs> you know, I, I, I kind of buy into that a little bit. I, I think yeah. after a while, they they do key into flies. I mean, just ask Sean. Uh, you know, Sean Combs. Yeah. You know, and his yeah. thoughts and some of the flies he loves to use. And he's got a lot of big brown trout, but now he's like, "I'm not catching them. I'm just moving them. I'm like moving yeah. them." Oh, I think uh, that they do get used to it. That's why. That's why I know you. All you guys are fishing big streamers uh, on oh, the local rivers, and I fish smaller streamers. Yeah, because I, I, I know everybody's fishing streamers this long. You know, and, yeah. I, I fish a lot of small stuff. It's it's rare that I fish the great big streamers anymore. Um, it's usually when I get on the boat with Sean or something, and he's like, "Yeah, throw this." I'm like, all right, yeah. sweet. But it, it, in the right conditions, those big streamers work great. Uh, they, they work do, really, yeah. really well. But I yeah. find more often than not, the smaller stuff seems to work better. Um, you know, and it you catch more fish or, uh, you know, because you will catch the smaller fish, too, you know, with the smaller yeah. flies. But I have caught some really, really nice fish on this fly. Um, you know, the same big fish that I would catch on those great big streamers. Um, you know, I've caught the same size fish on on this fly. Um and uh, I just think there's there's more opportunities where this is going to work with this this little guy. That's my dummy. Uh, you know, where this little guy will work than those great big flies. Yep. You know. But no, this was a lot of fun. This was a lot of fun, and yeah. I mean, hopefully, uh, you don't want me to return and give away more secret flies. Or I, do, like that. I do. <laughs> yeah. I do. I, I want you to. I want you to come back and. And I'm sure that uh, our tires here would like you to have you back. So um, thank you, Pete. I really appreciate your time and sharing your pattern, which is very generous of you. Yeah. And don't any of you tell Flagler about this fly. <laughs> he's he's a big spay guy. Uh, he loves yeah. to, he's, he's big into the trout spay. We've talked a little bit about it, but I kind of yeah. tried steering him wrong a few times, but I think he saw right through that. <laughs> we're keeping it between us. We're keeping it. We're not telling Flagler about this fly. No way. All right. Well, thanks again. Thank you. Thanks, Pete. Thank you, everyone, uh, for tuning in today. We really appreciate it. We love your questions. You've had you've had some really great questions today, and um, tie some of these sculpins and try them out all over the world. Because I see people from Germany and South America and uh, yeah, New Zealand. Let us know. Uh, let us know how they work there. Yeah, I hope they do. I, I really do. I really yeah. do because it's uh, it's fun to see. You know, you tie something and and it works in other places. It's uh, that's. Yeah. I really, really do want to see that. I, I want to see this, this will work, work anywhere. This will yeah. work anywhere. I guarantee you. Nice. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next Monday. I don't even see know what everybody. I'm tying next Monday. I got to figure <laughs> it out. <laughs>